What's good, YouTube? DM here with the DM Network. Today, guys, we got something that may reveal a little bit more about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Before we get into all that, y'all know the routine. Follow me on the social media platforms, PSN ID, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook at DMGaming06. Also, it would be much appreciated if you could click that sub button and join the over 9,000 hype squad. Also, y'all, when you click that bell icon, turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything because I even do stuff in the community tab, things like that. Now, before I get into that, we didn't get a single iota of information on Dragon Ball Z Kakarot during an anime expo, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Like, I don't. I don't get it, man. An anime expo, and you don't even talk about the biggest game you have that you're releasing. Yeah, let's be real. Covain, I don't think Covain is as big as Dragon Ball Z is. Like, real talk. Like, why would you not talk about Dragon? You could have at least said something. Something little. You could have talked about training. You could have released some new screenshots. Nothing. Bandai, Namco, come on. However, it could just be as simple as they want to do a separate thing for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot because they don't want that game to overshadow everything else. Because they did announce a new One Piece of uh, Pirate Warriors, I think is the name of it. Not a, not a One Piece guy, so I don't remember the name, but it's a new One Piece game. They did announce that. Um, they showed some more Code Vein stuff. They showed another One Punch Man trailer. Um and the dot hack stuff so it's really just boils down to they don't want dragon ball z kakarot to overshadow those other games because let's be real that is the biggest game that bandai namco has coming out so guys my fingers was crossed for that one no bueno and it was funny because somebody in the comment section said you know it'd be something if they didn't even announce anything at all about dragon ball z kakarot and i told him that he jinxed us so Shout out to you for jinxing us. <laughs> However, we could have gotten some news through something else. So, recently, if you follow Bandai Namco on Twitter, they announced something. Let me uh, get that off my screen so I can make sure everything's going good. All right. Bandai Namco announced, and if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, y'all, I'm going to just say this. Zoro. Zoro from One Piece. Okay, so One Piece World Seeker was a game where you could only play as, guess who? Luffy. You can't play as any of the other characters. You can only play as Luffy. And a lot of people looked at Dragon Ball Z Kakarot as kind of going the same way. And actually, it kind of is. The only difference is One Piece World Seeker is an open world game. You can go anywhere you want on the map. Whereas Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, you can't for the sake of staying true to the story. But I digress. So, Rono Ro Ronoa? Zoro? Zoro. I'm just calling him Zoro. Will be another cog in the machine. Watch his stealth and style as he goes up against enemies on Prison Island. Prison Island is where the game takes place. The Void Mirror Prototype DLC will release July 12th. Get ready to play as Zoro in One Piece World Seeker. Y'all. What does that mean? I mean, like I said, that is huge because previously the only playable character was none other than Luffy. However, now you can play a Zoro and he gets his own, um, his own basically, basically it's his own story. Now they're calling it DLC episode one because episode one is Zoro. More than likely they're going to have other episodes that are going to be, uh, with other characters the reason i bring this up is because dragon ball z kakarot could very well do the exact same thing and we have actually talked about that 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 the other clay other players would be dlc the other being able to play through the story as other players so for instance you could have dlc pack one say for instance is vegeta and you actually play as vegeta more than likely you're gonna um Play through Goku's, play fighting against Goku and lose, of course. I don't know how they're going to do that. That'd be really weird to have to fight against Goku and still lose. I don't know, but they do it in games all the time, so I digress. But play through as Vegeta. 
And then, of course, Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, you know, stuff like that. Or they could have a Z-Warriors pack where you could play through the game as all of them. Um, and then have Vegeta separate or something. Or You know, there's a lot of different ways they can do that. But we did discuss that that is a possibility. And now that we see they're doing this that exact thing with One Piece, it, it's like, oh my gosh, this, you know, some people is like, but... DM, this isn't One Piece. Yes, but it's Bandai Namco. You see how they did with Dragon Ball Fighters and Xenoverse and Jump Force? How they're releasing characters? The DLC model is the same for all three of those games. You get a free update, but then you get character packs. Um, and so it, it's, it, it's the same company. So if one DLC thing kind of profits them, they'll stick with it. And, and so it wouldn't be surprising to me if they did the exact same thing with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So I want to know in the comment section down below, how would you feel if that's how they did DLC? If DLC was being able to play as if, if playable characters was the DLC, because here's the thing that people have to understand. The way that I'm looking at the game going at when they say playable characters, I'm looking at it as. You're not going to be able to, say, for instance, unlock Vegeta and be able to fly around, do everything in the game with Vegeta. No. Goku is the one who has to advance the story. Now, in those instances when Goku isn't around, I'm pretty sure you'll get to somewhat control a different character. It's possible that we may not. However, let's just say, because I think I don't think they'll do that. I think you'll actually get to control those other characters. But being able to, for instance, when Gohan and Krillin were on Planet Namek. Being able to control them for that short period of time is a lot different than being able to control Gohan all the way from start to finish throughout the game. Like him getting kidnapped and all that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? That's a lot different. Um, and so when I say playable characters, I'm talking about being able to be one character throughout the entire game and basically play through their version of the story. Like perfect example, Budokai 3. Perfect example. So in Budokai 3, that's that's think of Budokai 3, y'all. Think of Budokai 3. In Budokai 3, for those of y'all who may not know, you basically played with each character in the game and they had their own story. So for instance, if I was Goku, Goku and Vegeta had the longest stories because, well, they did the most in the anime. And then Gohan was there at Piccolo as well. But you know, if I was playing with Krillin, for example. Um, when I'm playing with Krillin, I wouldn't start out against Raditz because I didn't fight against Raditz. With Krillin, you would start out against Nappa around that time, the Saiyan Saga. And you would do everything that Krillin did in the anime. Same thing for Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, Goku, Chao Su, Tien, Yamcha, like all of them. Even the evil people. Like you even got to, did you play as freezing them? No, I don't know. I have to go back and see that. Y'all let me know. I don't know if you have to play as the villains. I know you got to play with Broly in that regard and stuff like that. So, but yet and still, um, you in Budokai Three, you actually got to play with each individual character. They had their own, pretty much their own story mode. If you got to see the all the events of Dragon Ball Z through their eyes and their standpoint, so that is what I think of playable characters as, and that is what I think they're gonna do with the DLC is that. So when we play through it with Goku's eyes, yeah, when Goku's not around, for the sake of staying true to the anime, the game is going to allow you to control those players. But what people are thinking playable characters is, is like Budokai 3, where you play through the whole story as Vegeta, or you play through the whole story as Krillin. I don't think that's what it's going to be. I, I'm thinking if they go with the same DLC route that they just did in One Piece, then what you're looking at as playable characters is being able to play through the whole story as one character. That's potentially going to be DLC. That's what we're getting at with this video. That's what I'm. I don't know. Am I okay with that? Not really. But at the same time, it depends on how much in depth the main game is. And from what I've seen and what I know we still haven't heard and what's coming, the game is going to be very much in depth. So it makes sense. For them to make those other characters DLC characters. Um, people aren't going to like that. But here's the thing. You could, you could give a million dollars to everybody in the world. And it's going to be somebody who's not okay with that. You see what I'm saying? So pe some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. Some people are going to be like, I would prefer Super for DLC. Or Dragon Ball for DLC. And who knows? They could very well do that. You know, 
I don't think that they're going to take the uh, Budokai 3 approach to the game, but they very well could because remember what it said in the demo. As Goku, you see what I'm saying? It did say that. As Goku, take out the Red Ribbon or whatever. So it could be possible that we actually are able to fly around with whatever characters we have unlocked because think about it. How else would we be able to train them? Because at the end of the Raditz fight, I didn't see any level up stuff go to Piccolo. It went all to Goku. So I don't know that, you know, it's up in the air. Only thing I'm talking about is this stuff being a possibility. You see what I'm saying? Because companies tend to follow the same DLC patterns, you know. So that's something to think about. Like I said, do I really think they'll go that route? Me personally, I don't think that they will simply because I think that we'll be able to control. I would say control the characters in our party, for example. So what I mean by that is, for instance, Fighting against Raditz, the only person that's on your team is Goku and Piccolo. So you can switch from Goku to Piccolo and fly around the map possibly as Piccolo, but you're not going to see the story from Piccolo's standpoint. And you're not going to be able to play the main missions or advance the story from Piccolo's standpoint. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, you may be able to fly around with whatever character is in your party, but you're not going to see the story from their standpoint. So you're not going to be able to fight against these people you know, from their standpoint, the DLC could be playing the story from their standpoint, like in Budokai 3. Y'all get what I'm saying? I hope so, because this video is coming to an end. That's all I got for right now, y'all. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section down below. Till next time, thanks for watching. Peace.